what is up guys this is the third video of the bing scrape series and uh, in the first video we had uh, drawn our structure on how the program is going to be in the second video we start creating all these outlines for all these functions and in this third video we'll start writing a couple of functions so first let's uh, actually start with func main so in func main uh, like i said you know the func main only talks to this function called as the bing scrape that we have to define out here so i'll take it from here and i'll actually put it here and in Bing script we have to pass a couple of things right so we have to pass the query and we have to pass the um, Bing domain that I'll use so for example I'll be using com let's give an example and the query for query I'll say Akhil Sharma and then I'll have to pass a couple of more things, right? So we'll let's get into that later on. And uh, here we can either get a result or we can get an error from this function. So we'll engineer this function in this way, in a way, Bing script that it'll either give us a result or an error. Now, if error is nil, that means if there's no error, then we'll take the response we'll range over the response and we're just going to print out the response and this is why we required the FMT package so uh, one and one uh, as, as we go using all these packages I'll show you so FMT package has been used here to print out the result okay and then if you say else That means, so the if statement gets executed if there is no error and else gets executed if there is an error. So here we just have to print out the error. Now many people use log for error, printing uh, for printing out the errors, but we're just simply going to print out the errors, right, in this case. So this was your func main and I think this is it. I mean, we don't need func main for anything else. Now let's get started with our Bing script function, which is uh, going to be quite a big function and here we'll take some parameters and the parameters obviously we have our search term which is a kill Sharma and then we have our country which is basically our Bing domain which is com in this case and then you'll have a couple of more things right which we will like I said we'll talk about them and here what it returns is it returns search result based on the struct of the search result so it'll send us a collection of these different structs and that's what it'll basically send us a slice of uh, search result right so uh, slice is basically a collection right and a collection of all these different uh, structs it'll send us back to this function func main and that's what we're basically going to be printing out here the other thing it returns is an error and we already have error handling built in out here okay so here we'll say results equal to search result and for now it's empty so results is going to be that variable this new variable that we're going to actually return from here and so like basically at the end we'll say return search results uh, resu return results uh, and then it's of type slice and of uh, stuck type search result and it's currently empty and then you'll call a function called build bing urls we already have the outline of this function so all it does is it helps us to build a url so it's going to take the search term it's going to take the country and then what we also need is the pages and the count so to be able to build a proper url not only do we need the search term in the country but we also need how many pages do you need right how many pages of results do you want to scrape and what's the count of the uh, values on each page do you need all right so here we'll pass two as the pages number of pages that we need and 30 as the count 30 I think is a uh, sufficient count for us so here 
in our Bing script function, we have to accept these values. So we'll say comma pages and comma count. All right. And that means in our build Bing URLs function, we can pass our country pages and count. Now, whatever value we get back from this build Bing URLs, oh, sorry, the I is capital here. It should be small i. So this is what the function is. And whatever value that you get from uh, this function, you'll take it into this param uh, in this uh, variable called build pages, Bing pages, and then otherwise uh, this function will return an error. So that's how we'll engineer this function. It'll return either the pages or return an error quite straightforward and if there is an error that means error not equal to nil we'll return nil for the search results so that means no search result is returned and we'll return the error that was encountered here so we'll say error so if error is there then you return no search result and you return an error all right i hope everything is clear till now and if there is no error right then what do you want to do? We want to basically range over our Bing pages. So we'll say range over your Bing pages. But to range, you need for loop. So we'll say for comma page. And we'll range over these Bing pages. And we'll say rank is equal to length of results and then we'll have a function called scrape client request so that we have already defined here scrape client request now we've re we've uh, received all the pages after uh, building all these bing urls and all we have to do is scrape them scraping requires us to create uh, basically you know make requests make HTTP requests so here we have to also pass proxy string but for now uh, let's leave it I'll talk about it later and if error is not equal to nil now the scrape client request right this will uh, return two different things to us it will re return a response or it will send us an error so that's how we'll create this function to return either a response or an error. And if the error is not equal to nil, so let me take it closer. Error is not equal to nil. Then you return nil for the search results and the error, right? Very similar to this. So with Golang, the best practice is that every time you call a function, uh, you handle the error out there itself, um, which, is, which is a good practice, right? With JavaScript, uh, you know, you uh, sometimes ignore those and or you create try and catch blocks, which, uh, you know, can be effective. But I, s I personally and uh, obviously uh, the whole Golang community finds this to be more effective to catch errors. So then you have your Bing result parser function. In your Bing result parser, you will pass uh, the result that you res receive from scraping and you'll parse send your rank as well okay now Bing result parser is, is the function that we've already talked about it's basically going to help us take unstructured data which is going to come to us from this function scrape client request and it's going to give us a structured data based on our search result struct okay so we'll take a variable called data and we'll say data is equal to Bing search result parser. So whatever value comes back from it, uh, you will either get in data or you'll get an error out here. And what we'll do is we'll again handle the error. So we'll say if error not equal to nil, we'll return nil for the search results and error, the value of error. And then we're just simply going to range over our data. And then we're going to append that to our results. And we're going to create the slice of result. And then we're just going to s send it off back. So quite simple. So we'll say for comma result 
range over data like i said we'll range over data that we receive from here from our bing result parser and we're going to take this into our results variable which is a slice of type search results and we're going to append it so we'll say results comma results so append it here now sometimes you may want to give a little bit of delay right between requests so here you can use something called as a back off so back off is something that we'll have to now pass to this function right this is completely optional right but this is a best practice if you're scraping something or if you're making requests to something you uh, idly want to use uh, back off and in in many cases you want to randomize uh, the uh, the time duration between which you make these requests in this case we're not randomizing it but we are still adding some type of delay now this back off needs to come right from your uh, funk main so here we'll say comma 30 which is our back off duration and we need to pass that to our bing scrape function so after our count we'll say comma back off int and that's how basically you get the back off out here so our function is taking shape pretty well and we have pretty much you know created the basic structure for our bing scrape function and bing scrape function is basically like i said the most important function in this uh, program because this is the one that talks to funk main and talks to all the other functions that we're going to use so for example scrape client request build bing urls so this is like the center of everything it, it's the glue that binds all these functions together and creates those results and sends back to funk main which simply prints out those results and uh, if you want to um, you know change any of these values uh, it's it's highly encouraged as in change all these values and check how the program works and uh, that'll be also very interesting for you because you can basically uh, scrape any um, country's bing and you can also put any search result uh, search term you can put any number of pages or uh, search results number of search results that you want you can also change the delay here so uh, what i'll do is i'll keep this video short and because i don't want this to be an overload so uh, i highly recommend uh, doing these videos one day at a time so that you don't end up uh, you know if, if you're new to golang that is if you're uh, if you're golang uh, an experienced developer then by all means watch this whole playlist on in one day but if you're somebody who's getting started just uh, watch them uh, one day at a time so that uh, you know everything makes sense to you and you have time to digest all of this information uh, so do stay subscribed to this channel so that you come to know when the next video of this series comes out. And thanks a lot for watching this and see you in the next episode.